All right, welcome back students. We're gonna keep going. Now we're going to look at rational numbers. So we're gonna do multiplying and dividing rational numbers. So the same thing as before, when you are multiplying and dividing rational numbers, we're talking not just whole numbers, we're also talking about fractions and decimals. So we're gonna focus on fractions and decimals. When you're multiplying the digits, for, I'm sorry, when you're multiplying um, a decimal, you're going to line up the decimal points, but you're going to ignore them until you get to the end, when you're going to count the place values. So for example, I'm going to use this color and blue. I like these two. I'm use these two. I have 12 and 80 hundredths, and I'm going to multiply that times 6 and 3 hundredths. I'm sorry, 6 and 3 tenths. I apologize. 6 and 3 tenths. Hopefully, I don't run out of space. I should be all right. So I'm going to look here. Now, you do not have to line up your decimals like we did with adding and subtracting. Remember, I said we're going to ignore the decimals. You don't have to line them up. We're going to end up counting how many decimals we have when we finally get our answer. So let's start. Three times zero. Three times zero. Anything times zero is zero. Uh-oh, hopefully it's dark enough. Let's see if it's, let me make sure it's dark enough. Can we see it? Kind of. I may have to try and find a darker color. Even though I don't really want to. I want to make sure you can see it. I won't help if you can't see it. All right. Then I stick with three. I stick with my three. Three times eight. Three times eight is 24. I bring down my four and I carry my two. Three times two is six, and six plus two is eight. You following me so far? Then we have three times one, which is three. So let's make sure we did this right. Three times zero, three. Three times eight, 24. Carry the two. Three times two is six. And then six plus two is eight. And then three times three, th I'm sorry, three times one is three. Okay, so, so far, I have my three that I multiply times all my numbers. Then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go down to six because I did three and I'm going to six. Six times zero. Now remember, you skip a space. When you get to the next number, you skip a space. So if this had another number for the third time, I'd have to skip a space again. We're not gonna do that today. We're gonna just focus on these. Six times eight. Well, six times eight is 48. And I carry a four. Six times two is 12. And then 12 plus four is 16. And then six times one is six plus one, seven. Then I'm gonna add everything together. So we're gonna combine everything. The zero, just I just bring that down. Four, so remember, four plus zero, four. So I said combine, so hopefully you remember that means to add. Eight plus eight is 16. Six plus three is nine, plus one is eight. Oops, sorry, nine. <laughs> I put that in the wrong spot. Six plus three is nine, plus one is 10. Carry your one. And then seven plus one, eight. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back to the original problem and you're going to look 
at your decimals. Well, how many decimals did I move here? I went one space here, so that's one. Over here, I go one, two. So just like I did down here, I'm gonna add how many places I went. Two plus one is three places. I went three places. So I'm gonna take these decimals that I put at the back and I'm gonna move them. I'm gonna move it from the back to one, two, and three. Three places. I went one, two, and three. So that my final answer is eight, zero, six, four. 80 and 64 hundredths. That is how you do that for your multiplication. That is how we multiply. Okay. Let's try division. Now, in order to make the divisor a whole number, you have to multiply it by a power of 10. And then you divide and bring the decimal directly above into the quotient. Missy, I don't know what that means. That's okay. That's why I'm here. I'm going to show you instead of just talking to you about it. So we're going to have 43 and 7 tenths divided by 19. What's after stays on the outside. What's before stays in the house. So you're going to think, how many times can 19 fit into 43? Well, we know it'll fit one time. Let's see if it'll fit twice. So you see how this is one and a nine? We have to do four and a three. So I'm gonna go above that second number because there's two numbers here. I'm gonna go above the two numbers here. So two times nine, is 18, two times one is two. Could we have gone to three? Probably not, because we would have went over. Because remember, if we did a three, you'd have to have a two above it, and then that would already be three, four, five, so we'd be in the 50s. So that's how we know that would not have worked. So can I take eight away from three? No, I cannot. I have to borrow. So now I can do it. 13 minus eight is five and three minus two is one. Now guys, I know I'm not moving slow because guess what? This is review. This is nothing new. This is nothing new for us. I'm gonna bring down my seven. I'm going to think, how many times can I fit 19 into 157? I'm not sure. Let's try it. You ready? So what do we need to do? We got 15. What do we need to do? Okay. 19 times 2, we know is 28. We are going to need to go a whole lot higher in order for this to make sense, don't we? So how many times do you think? Let's try. If I did um, 5, if I want to say 19 times 5, Nine times five is 45, carry my four. Five plus four is nine. So I'm close, I'm not too far off. So it can't, it has to be higher than five. So let's jump two spaces. 19 times seven, let's try 19 times seven. Nine times seven is 63. Seven times one is seven plus six. 13, we're getting closer. So do you think we should try another one? 19 times eight. 
eight times nine is 72. Seven, I'm sorry, eight times one is seven. <laughs> eight times one is eight plus seven is 15. I'm sorry. Y'all know how I get sometimes. All right, so it's 152 with a remainder. So that means we're gonna put an eight here. And I'm gonna say that's 152 with a remainder of five. When With your decimal, all you're gonna do is take your decimal and put it up there. Now, normally we would keep going, but for, for us, we're just gonna leave it there. We're gonna leave it there because I wanna make sure we review fractions. Because like I said, this is review. This is nothing new, okay? So we're gonna quickly go over our fractions. Let's say I need to multiply, what was that, number three, number four? Let's say I need to multiply three-fifths times two-thirds. The rules of multiplication say the only thing I'm going to do is just straight multiply across. Just straight multiply across. All right, so straight multiply across says three times two. Well, what's three times two? Three times two is six. And then five times three, 15. Now, I would want you to simplify this. What number do they both have in common? Hopefully you said three. They both have three in common. So I would divide that by three and divide that by three. So that my final answer is two fifths. Let's try one that has a negative number. Negative five over six times three-fourths. Negative five times three. Remember, they are opposites. They are different. So if they're different signs, I am going to get a negative answer. Six times four is 24. Now they both have a number in common. Again, they both have a three in common. Funny how that worked out. Negative 15 divided by three was gonna give you five, and 24 divided by three is gonna give you eight. For a final answer of five eighths. Take a picture or a screenshot if you have to. I'm getting ready to move it. Now let's review dividing. Number six, we're going to divide. So I'm gonna start off with a negative fraction divided by a positive fraction. If you remember, what do we have to do before we can divide this fraction? Please tell me you remember that you have to keep, change, flip, not keep change opposite, that's for subtracting. Keep change flip. So I'm going to keep the first the same. I'm going to change my operation to its inverse. And I'm going to flip, flip. I'm going to flip the other fraction upside down so that what was the numerator is now the denominator and what's the denominator is now the numerator. Now I can get to my final answer. Negative two times 
times two is a negative four, and three times one is three. Okay? I know this video is getting kind of long, guys, but hang in there. Just hang in there. Am I going to leave it like this? No, 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 no. Why am I not leaving it like this? Because you need to simplify. When you simplify, you're looking at how many times can this number fit in here? This will fit one whole time. So my whole number is a one. When this three fits into the four, so that means four, and then one, two, three, what's left over? A one. So my remainder is one, and my denominator stays the same. That's not supposed to be in there. There we go. Sorry, I'm gonna make that negative sign a little bit bigger. There you go. I just realized I couldn't really see the negative sign that much. All right, so we're going to try one more. And I think this one could just be a regular type one. I don't really think we need to make it both um, negatives. We'll just make them both positive. So we'll do, what I want to do. I'm going to do a positive eight ninths divided by a positive four ninths. Remember, KCF, keep, change, flip. Keep it, change it, flip it. Huh, keep it, change it, flip it. Keep it, change it, flip it. Hey, hey. All right, I just made that up. Don't copyright it. All right. I keep eight over nine or keep eight ninths. I am going to change my division to a multiplication. And I'm going to flip. So now the nine is no longer the numerate, um, the denominator. Now it is my numerator. Then I can just straight multiply across. 8 times 9 is 72, and 9 times 4 is 36. Now, you need to look to see if you need to simplify this. 72 divided by 36 is going to give you 2. Oops, my marker top. Okay, uh -oh, it's a little crooked. You see it? So hopefully this reminder or this review has kind of jogged something into your brain and said, oh, okay, wait a minute. I remember doing this. I remembered when we pulled out the colors. I remember when um, Miss T talked to us about keep, change, flip. I remember this. So I'm going to use my memory. I'm going to use the notes. I'm going to use what I remember from the video that Miss T is making right now to finish my assignment. Continue to try the assignments until you get a 70. You cannot say that you've mastered something until you can at least get a 70. And in eighth grade, it is super, super important that you have mastered the concepts from seventh grade because then it makes eighth grade a whole lot less stressful okay I'm not gonna say easy because it's a different grade and I don't want to set you up to making you think it's easy but it will make it less stressful when you have these concepts and you can say oh okay well I know at least the average part of it the average of it is a 70 okay so like I said I know this video is a little bit longer than the other ones but I really want to make sure you guys understand this and you guys get this. On the next video, I'm going to do one more video and it's just going to be strictly on 
how to do a reminder on how to multiply and divide when you're looking at a real life situation, a word problem. So I'll see you in the next one, guys.